it. President. The committee will continue to scrutinize the uh, uh, CSAs for stamp duty amendment bill 2013. We are now uh, conducting our eighth uh, debate, joint debate. Who would like to who would like to speak? Mr. Starry Lee, we support the government's uh, proposed CSA so that uh, replacement by a uh, replacement owner. Uh, would have more time to dispose of the old property. The original proposal is to count the six month period from the date of uh, ASP, and now it's been changed. It's proposed to change to the time of uh, conveyance so that the uh, owner, uh, more owners, uh, will be able to enjoy the uh, tax ref refund. So, uh, so the uh, Owner of a uh, property who buy a new property will have uh, two or three more months uh, to take advantage of the exemption. The bills committee did have a lot of uh, discussion on this, and uh, it was uh, the view of the bills committee that the original proposal would not uh, benefit uh, a property owner who uh, wishes to. Uh, by a replacement uh, property. Chairman, when the news uh, came out, uh, when, uh, that's before the time the, the administration came to the Bills Committee. It was uh, out uh, on Monday. Uh, and the news was widely reported uh, saying that the tougher measure will be uh, re reduced in the toughness. And also, there are new developments, uh, pre, pre sale threats of new developments being on offer. And after the news was uh, published, the sale of these uh, new developments, uh, new threats, uh, were very good. I believe uh, the time allowed for replacement owned uh, property to be purchased and old property to be disposed of is just one of the many reasons why the Buyers would now to choose to buy, and then uh, when uh, the administration came to the meeting of the bills committee, the property sub index of Hang Seng index uh, rose for a few days. Or altogether, there was uh, an increase of six point eight percent, and the secondary market became more active. Uh, the, uh, for, on the following day, I was invited to a radio program to offer comments on the. Proposed change. Some the property owners immediately ask for higher prices, or to take their properties uh, off the market. So this uh, piece of news has uh, aroused a lot of uh, response in the market. So we have to be very careful to assess Mr. Tommy Jones' uh, amendment in in this light. The bills committee. Uh, was of the view that uh, the government's proposal was just a technical amendment, but then uh, the technical amendment uh, kick off a chain reaction. So that's uh, another uh, evidence to prove that the market can be very sensitive. Some some people made uh, unknowingly or deliberately. Uh, Misinterpret the news, and uh, the new the, the market uh, took it as a reduction in the toughness of the top measures. And uh, property owners, of course, would like to ask for higher prices now that uh, the market is has was more active. We believe after the proposed amendment, on the whole, we'll be able to allow the. Owners who acquire before disposal to do so within the uh, specified time frame and get a, a duty uh, refund. Therefore, we do not support Mr. Tommy Jones' uh, CSA to further extend the time allowed for acquisition before disposal. I so submit. Mr. Chen Chi Chin. Thank you, Chairman.
the Secretary always criticized member CSA in two ways. First, we undermine the integrity of the policy. Second, we send out confusing message. Uh, the two grounds uh, are, no, are not valid in respect of uh, some of the CSAs moved by other members, but uh, they are valid in respect of this proposed CSA because uh, if this is passed, it's going to be uh, very confusing. Let me state again my position with regard to the CSAs on the tough measures. Yes, we should err on the tough side. That's the first point. Second, if there is a loophole, especially a big one, we should find a way to pluck it. Just like what uh, Mr. James Toast did uh, regarding uh, transacting many, many properties under one instrument, that loophole should be plucked. And second, if we uh, affect the wrong people, the wrong group of people, and then uh, should we offer an exemption? We have to ca consider carefully. If there are uh, more pros than cons, more advantages than disadvantages, we'll do it. If uh, it would affect the effectiveness of the package of measures, then we have to think twice. And we cannot avoid affecting the wrong people. They are in the minority, and uh, the sacrifice is unavoidable. For example, for the non PR, buying their own PRH friends, uh, the administration said that those people will be handled under uh, their in respective cases. And now uh, the administration had, has agreed to change its position. So that's, uh, th that's already done. Now under Mr. Tommy Jones' uh, CSA, a PR will be able to dispose of an old property within 12 months to be entitled to the uh, refund of the duty duty uh, difference and uh, the time will come from the uh, 12 months of assignment instead of uh, ASP, six months within the uh, uh, assignment or conveyance. Some members are of the view that uh, the market is sluggish. If we uh, uh, Ask the owner who buy a new property to dispose of his old property, the only property he has, within six months. The time allow is too short. Once again, I would like to talk you to look at the intention of the tough measures. We want property prices to come down to a reasonable level so that local genuine users, especially first-time home buyers, can afford to buy their homes. We want to help uh, Hong Kong PR to acquire the residential properties. Uh, Mr. Dennis Kwok uh, talked about uh, the difficulties faced by middle class people in uh, replacing uh, their properties with a bigger one. For example, the family may become bigger with the arrival of a baby, but that's not, that doesn't come under the policy. The policy is not about helping the middle class to uh, get a bigger threat or to improve the living conditions. Of course, these people are not speculators, but we can't say that we have the, the bill affects the wrong people. You are given six months. You may say it's not sufficient. The, the longer period, the better. The shorter the period allowed, the smaller your bargaining power. But that's just uh, the basic principle. Let's look at some figures from 2011 to 2012. About half of those who uh, acquired before disposal would be able to uh, complete the disposal of uh, the old property within six months. And uh, local banks also offer bridging loans to these uh, purchasers. Usually, the, the loan will be for six months. Hi. So, such loans can help 
people um, who acquire a flat before disposing of the original flat within a six-month period. And um, I think the administration um, has already um, made a concession uh, in um, uh, acquisition before disposal cases so that these uh, owners um, will not have to pay the double um EVD. So we can see that adjustments have already been made by the administration. And if the period is um, extended beyond six months, then that would mean that um, the period during which the owner can hold on to two property items at the same time will be lengthened. In other words, um, the owner can dispose of uh, the um, original flat later. Now, some have advised that um, uh, if um, prices are going up, then there should be acquisition before disposal. If prices are dropping, then there should be disposal before acquisition. And so, if Mr. Tommy Jones amendment is passed, then um, um, the um, owner will have a longer period of time to dispose of the property. But of course, I understand that there may be a downside. Now, in fact, in order to uh, minimize any uncertainty, the best way is to um, dispose of the original flat as soon as possible um, after you've acquired the new flat. Um, so, um, in other words, uh, in fact, you just want to change flats. You, in fact, um, have no intention to um, uh, make as much money as possible. But then if the period is lengthened, then you may feel that the prices may go up, and so you may w not want to dispose of the original flat um, within a six-month period. You may want to wait until the 10th month or the 11th month. And if property prices drop, then the owner will suffer losses. And this is because if the period is lengthened, the owner may feel that um, um, he can uh, wait and see, and um, he may be able to dispose of um, his original flat at a higher price. And uh, in fact, in May, when the uh, concession was announced, um, the market um, became active again. I have a friend who um, uh, paid um, a deposit in May, and um, transaction um, took place after the concession was announced. And then the newspapers reported on his case. According to the newspapers, um, the, cons um, the new measure um, caused the market to become exuberant again. Uh, according to newspaper reports, people um, scrambled to buy flats because of the um, new measure. But in fact, that was not the case. Uh, in fact, my friend pay, had paid a deposit before the measure was announced. And uh, as a result, um, because of these um, newspaper reports, um, some members of the public um, might decide to um, um, take part in speculative activities, or they may um, um, start to think about buying a flat in the hope that they will be able to make some gains. I, I want to say that uh, in my view, even if um, this is not passed today, um, estate agents won't be able to make use of this to um, try to um, um, make the market exuberant um, tomorrow. But then I want to say that uh, um, my friend was um, covered, uh, my friend's case was covered in um, the newspaper reports. Um, it was said that um, 
um, he was uh, willing to pay more for the flat because of the good news. But in fact, my friend uh, had paid the deposit um, at a very early stage. And so, um, uh, what we do um, does affect the property market. And um, um, concerning um, the secondary market, those who would like to change flats, I think they constitute the majority. Uh, of the cases. For those who change flats, um, I believe most of them uh, will buy flats in the secondary market, and, and not many of them will choose uncompleted flats. And um, I think the um, um, proposed exemption for acquisition before disposal cases is to cater for the needs of the genuine users. So in other words, um, um, the opportunity is um, um, given to the owners um, um, to um, change flats, not to um, make gains. Uh, I think in this case, the administration has already um, made a concession um, and then this period, uh, the six month period will um, um, start from the date of our conveyance on sale. And so um, I think um, people worry that the um, uh, period for changing flats um, is not long enough, can be allayed. And so I want to say that I cannot support Mr. Tommy Jones' amendment. Does any other member wish to speak? Secretary, do you wish to speak again? Chairman, I wish to say that um, in the Bills Committee, there was um, a lot of discussion on acquisition before disposal, and um, a lot of views were put forward by members and stakeholders. Uh, I think we need to uh, maintain the effectiveness of our measures. At the same time, we need to take care of the needs um, on the part of um, owners to change um, flats. And uh, that was why in May, we announced the adjusted measure. And we need to uh, manage demand. And that is why we uh, are proposing to maintain the six-month period. But then, of course, the start date has been uh, put back. We need to take into account the um, synergy effect and the uh, total effect of the various uh, demand-side management measures. If we extend the period to 12 months, then as we all know, um, if you buy uncompleted flats, uh, flats um, may be um, com uh, completed only 30 uh, months later. And as a result, that will um, um, fall within the ho uh, holding period of um, 36 months for the SSD, and as a result, um, the SSD will no longer be payable. That's why we need to um, have all these um, measures um, operating as a package. I understand that the adjustment or the amendment um, was welcomed by members from different political parties. Uh, but as Mr. Starry Lee uh, has pointed out, at the time um, the the, um, the market became um, a bit exuberant because uh, it was anticipated by the market that the administration would reduce the toughness of the measures, so to speak. And if we adopt Mr. Tommy Jones' amendment, if we uh, further relax the um, arrangements for acquisition before disposal, then um, the market may be stimulated. And I, I'm not be, uh, trying to uh, be uh, a scaremonger. Um, yes, Mr. Tommy Jung. Yes, Chairman. I want to say um, this. Members do have um, certain views uh, in relation to my CSA. Um, the secretary um, says that the integrity of the um, package uh, is important, and the administration um, says it doesn't want to send the wrong message to the market. And um, 
Mr. Chen Chichun um, has said that yeah, he supports the um, um, administration and also Gary Fan. And then I, I want to say this. Um, there is this amendment by the secretary. Yes, we welcome the amendment, but we think this amendment will only uh, will only benefit developers and the um, uh, uncompleted flats. Um, 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 developers used to have to um, subsidize the um, buyers for the um, um, AVD. The Civic Party has said that um, my amendment is uh, at least fairer than the uh, administration's amendment. And so the Civic Party is willing to support my amendment. I thank the Secretary um, for having responded um, to um, the amendment I proposed, and so in total, an extra two months uh, will be allowed for those uh, who change flats. So it seems that uh, you, you uh, like going to the market. You like to uh, bargain uh, with the um, store operators. So I proposed six months, and you said two months. But do you know that nowadays um, um, people do not bargain with the um, store operators in the market anymore? And I will not, like Mr. Wu Chi Wai, expect that you will suddenly change your mind and accept my very sound amendment. And I want to say that, um, Mr. Shek, um, uh, as Mr. Shek has said, I think my my amendment is much better than yours. You are only giving the owners two more months. I am suggesting six more months. And then I want to say something about young people um, aspiring to buy flats. Ten years ago, my son um, had not got married yet, and um, he bought a small flat. And then um, he uh, had a daughter. He had um, the first child, and so um, he um, changed to a bigger flat. And then um, he had a, um, a second child, and as a result, he um, changed to an even bigger flat. Chen Chi Chun, Gary Fan, they do not understand that um, there are very few choices for the first time home buyers. So, um, um, if those living in a 300 square foot flat do not change to a 600 square foot flat, then there can't be too many 300 square foot flats available in the market for first time home buyers. And I think the administration's amendment will only benefit the developers. No wonder why Hong Kong people are saying that there is collusion between the government and the big developers. Some uh, owners um, own a small uh, own small flats. They want to change the bigger flats, but then they have difficulties doing so. And I will not um, repeat my comments on the administration's CSA, but I want to say that um, my amendment means only four more months for the owners. Does that mean that a wrong message will be sent to the market as a result? According to your own figures, according to the administration's figures, uh, in half of the cases, all the transactions could be completed within six months. And some members um, have said um, less than half of the cases um, f f um, fell into this category. And uh, I uh, want six more months, and you are proposing to give the owners two more months, eight months in total. Do you think that will work? And my colleagues, um, some of my colleagues object to my amendment. Maybe they haven't uh, purchased flats recently. But then um, the professionals sitting on my right, um, I believe, know very well that, in fact, um, the um, 
formalities and the procedures for sale and purchase are extremely complicated and time-consuming. We're not trying to send a wrong message to the market. We are trying to tell people that if families would like to change to bigger flats, um, the barrier will not be on their way. Because if they do not release the smaller flats, then what about those first-time home buyers? Where can they find small flats? Last week, the property index showed that suddenly, last week, the small flats in the secondary market started to see an increase in transaction because um, users are buying them. So, Chairman, my amendment is really to entice more people who now own small flats and who want to change to bigger flats to do so. And I want to tell them that they need not be afraid. They should uh, be looking around and choose a bigger flat for replacement. And they will know that they would have enough time to get the procedures through. And uh, so they will not have to pay uh, tens of thousands of dollars more in stamp duty. That is all I like to say. Thank you. I now put the question to you, and that is the amendment moved by Mr. Tommy Jung, and that is his first amendment in Annex 1A be passed. Will those in favor, please? Mr. Raymond Chan claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
。開始表決。Voting begins。请各位核对表决。Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed, and the results are displayed. From FCs, 28 present, 9 yes, 15 noes, 4 abstentions. From GCs, 30 present, 9 yes, 20 noes, 1 abstention. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment negatived. Members, please go back to your seats. The SFST. Now you can move your ninth amendment. Chairman, I move my ninth amendment in Annex 1A in order to further amend Clause 18. I now put a question to you, and that is that the ninth amendment in Annex 1A is moved by the SFST.、Um, will those in favour please raise your hands? Mr. Lang Kuo Hong claims a division. The bell will ring for five minutes. A member has asked me when the meeting will end tonight. I am of the view that no matter what, we should complete the debate on this bill. And I'm talking about the Stamp Duty Amendment Bill 2013. We should complete the scrutiny of this bill here. After that. I am of the view that starting the marriage amendment bill, and if I think that we can at least complete the resumption of second reading debate, then we should start it. But if I am the view that if by 10 p.m. we cannot complete the resumption of second reading debate on another bill, then we should not start it. I am worried. That if we cannot complete the examination of the stamp duty amendment bill 2013 by 10 p.m.,、uh, will we continue our meeting until 12 midnight? So at least we can complete the voting on the bill. Yes, I'm of the view that no matter what, we should complete the examination of the stamp duty amendment bill 2013.
？你会唔会 ？Will you start on the marriage amendment bill if there is just one hour left? I don't think one hour will be enough.、Uh, if we can complete the examination of stamp duty amendment bill 2013 by about 8 p.m., then we should start the next bill. Voting begins. Members, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting is closed and the results are displayed. Fifty-five present, fifty-three for, none against, one abstention. The question is agreed by a majority of members present. I declare the motion passed. Mr. Kenneth Leung cannot attend the meeting. He has withdrawn、um, his notice to move his amendments. I have also given approval to Mr. Charles Mock、um, not to have to give notice and for him to move an amendment which is identical to the original amendments by Mr. Kenneth Leung. And Mr. Charles Mock has also given notice that he would move an amendment to Clause 18, as in Annex 1A, and this has to do with a refund mechanism for ad valorem stamp duty on instruments relating to non-residential property、um, owned by Hong Kong PR. Mr. Charles Mock, Chairman, I move. My amendment in Annex 1A, in order to further amend Clause 18, I'm speaking on behalf of the Professional Commons, and I am actually moving the amendment on behalf of Mr. Kenneth Leung. We are proposing to move an amendment so that, in certain circumstances, the、um, instruments with regard to non-residential property should receive. A、partial refund of the ad valorem stamp duty. The objective of the amendment is that by a partial refund of ad valorem stamp duty mechanism, to allow those、uh, companies which are already conducting business in Hong Kong can conduct their normal business in a comparatively predictable and stable environment, so that this will ensure development of the Hong Kong economy and opportunities for employment, and also there will be a revenue by way of profit tax to the government coffers. This、uh, bill. Is uh, about uh, dampening the overheated property market through demand side management. It should have the effect of、uh, allowing people to have a more stable living environment. But we should also allow people in business to have a stable environment. We don't want、uh, people not to have a roof over their heads. And、uh, we're talking about the same group of people. These people have to work. They are they are engaged in business, especially、uh, their SMEs who need to maintain their competitive edge. They may want to buy their own office premises instead of paying rent. It's an important factor for them to survive in the business environment, and this would.、Uh, Improve the or this is good for a long-term economic future. For example,、uh, I'm in the IT trade, and also Mr. Kenneth Leung、uh, is from the accountancy sector. There are many SME accountancy firms,、uh, so they need shops, they need offices, and in the future, in the second reading, I heard some members say. That we should have more electronic transactions, or、so、I'm all for it. But the question is, 
Uh, we cannot do any or everything uh, virtually. They need to rent offices. If you are a big corporation, if you are like Mr. Ma Yun, you, it's okay. But for local uh, businesses, they will have to pay high rental, and the rental uh, is just like pouring water into the drain. Many SMEs have told me that one of the difficulties that they are facing is the question of uh, business premises. Uh, our amendment is not going to affect the demand and supply of the residential sector. So what, what, what are the, why are people still objecting to this? We're not saying that uh, all such uh, instruments relating to such uh, non-residential property transactions will get a refund. There are three conditions. First, Hong Kong registered businesses or Hong Kong PR. Second, charitable organizations, and also counting from the uh, date of the applicable instrument, the relevant party of business have been carrying uh, carrying on business in Hong Kong, and uh, for a continuous period of three years, they are using the uh, premises, the property, and the property cannot be let or sublet in that period. And thirdly, the application for a refund must be made within two years after the expiry of the relevant period. On the 3rd of June, upon receipt of uh, Mr. Kenneth Leung's uh, notification that the CSA will be, will be moved, uh, the government uh, said something in response, and I would like to respond to those uh, points of the government. The government said that uh, this CSA it is tantamount to exempting all registered uh, businesses in Hong Kong or charitable organizations or Hong Kong PR from paying of the uh, double at volum duty and that's not in line with the government policy intent. Our stance is that uh, refunding part of the duty paid uh, under certain uh, conditions will not uh, fan speculation. The applicant must be using the property for not, not less than three years in order to be qualified. And it's difficult to uh, speculate properties uh, if you hold on to it uh, for more than three years. So it's not tantamount to exempting all Hong Kong registered businesses and the PRs uh, in paying the, the duty if they purchase non-residential properties. There are so many conditions to meet before uh, one is qualified. Actually, the CSA, this CSA does not conf conflict with the original policy intent of the bill. The second point made by the government is that the government finds it difficult to see whether the property is used for the relevant trade or profession of that business. It's, not, it's also not easy to assess whether the Hong Kong businesses or PRs are carrying on their trade or profession uh, in Hong Kong and uh, uh, whether they are holding the property continuously for that period. The present uh, stamp duty will only look at the nature of the property cover in the uh, instrument and, and levy the duty accordingly. Uh, it pays no attention to the purpose that the property is put is being used for a few years after the transaction. If we introduce this mechanism, we are changing the stamp duty mechanism, and uh, it's not in line with the principle of uh, proportionality. Here's our position. Our response is this: We find it curious that this is the standpoint of the government. The government. Uh, the government measures uh, do not uh, make, any, make, make a difference between the purposes of the uh, property, the use of the property. It seems that the government is reluctant to do something more to reach the right balance. So it just uh, say that this will require additional administrative work. It's a burden. Well, the government is it's about administration. You can't say that I would do it if I want. I won't do it if I don't. Apart from the three conditions that I have uh, mentioned, they have to use the property for three years continuously, and we exclude 
any case uh, where subletting or letting is uh, involved, and the applicant has to submit an application for stamp duty to be repaid, and they may have to make a uh, a declaration under oath uh, to make sure that the conditions have been met. The ILD can just look at the objective evidence related to that instrument to see if the applicant is uh, eligible for the duty refund. It doesn't have to uh, make any uh, subjective assessment on the use the property is being put, because if the applicant uh, submits uh, any false document documentation, he has to show the great uh, legal liabilities. According to past statistics released by the government, there were 10,000 uh, transactions of non-residential properties in 2013, and if the uh, ILD is going to assess uh, tax, uh, duty refund applications, there will be additional uh, work and uh, uh, there's a financial burden. Under the uh, Inland Revenue Ordinance, there is already a tax refund mechanism. Uh, For example, Section 29 DD, if you purchase a property for redevelopment, you can uh, get a refund for BSD. And they propose a 29 DE and 29 DF also stipulate that uh, having, if you uh, satisfy certain conditions, and in the case of uh, redevelopment, a disposal of uh, residential properties uh, would, en would uh, enable you to apply for a partial refund. And the Secretary has uh, agreed to deal with the relevant cases in accordance with the law. And I firmly believe that the ILD is very capable in dealing with such applications. There are conditions which are all objective in nature. They would not uh, add anything to the existing responsibilities of the ILD. There would not be any uh, implication for additional work or additional financial uh, implications. The government said that the property market fluctuates a lot. The CSA would convey a message to the property that uh, the uh, uh, tough measures will be uh, cancelled after the relevant period, and that there will be an impact on the demand side uh, management strategy. We have been listening to this word, message, message, time and again over the past few days. We are going to introduce three conditions which are restrictive. It's not that the applicant can e can just get a refund e easily. For those who who are not carrying on a substantive business, if uh, they want to provide false information, but there is already deterrent in existing laws. As long as the government explains clearly to uh, our peop to the people the conditions to be met, I don't think the. Uh, CSA will be construed as uh, as an attempt to the reduce the effectiveness of the top measures and diminish uh, the effectiveness of such measures. The government uh, is adopting it across the board to the, apply the top measures, but it's not going to uh, reduce the burden on certain sectors. It keeps saying that uh, the message will be confusing and speculation will come back. And uh, the FS said the same in his blog uh, during the weekend. I don't think you are telling people the whole truth. You are oversimplifying, and uh, I can say it's misleading. There are uh, messages of uh, different nature in the market. People will interpret the messages differently, apart from the message of the change to the uh, tough measures. There are other factors. For example, are we going to get uh, fewer IBS visitors? Are we going to have uh, a, a poorer economic outlook because of international economic development? There are many messages, but as a matter of fact, since the announcement of the top measures, the price property prices have been on the increase, but the number of transactions has dropped. The government's uh, explanation is that uh, we cannot relax on the tough measures, otherwise the prices will go up even further. Why can't you uh, interpret uh, the situation as as uh, the evidence for the top measures to be ineffective? 
So we may not be able to tell the outcome of uh, doing something here. It said that the uh, travel, the uh, property agents uh, will tell the customers to buy because uh, the top measures have been uh, watered down. But uh, that that's only true if the customer believes the agent. If we cannot do this, we c we cannot uh, water down. Or, or I think uh, the opposite scenario is that uh, the uh, government's uh, me measures are endorsed uh, without change. That is to say, we do not water it down. Actually, we have a one uh, change just then, just a moment ago. The agent would say that uh, those CSAs are asking for the the tough measures to be uh, toughened uh, did not get passed. So that's all the tough measures we can expect, and it's not going to get worse. So you should enter the market now, so that we cannot establish a causal relationship between the messages and the outcome. It's not as simple as the FS sees it. If that's so simple, the administration would have been able to control property prices at the very outset, but uh, it failed to do so. I don't think the government should uh, affect the wrong people. The FS is concerned that we'll be doing something bad out of good intention, but that's uh, also our concern in respect of the FS proposal. This time we want to do something for SMEs. We hope that the SMEs will not be uh, adversely affected by the government's top measures when they are they shouldn't be affected. We are affecting the wrong target group. These uh, SMEs are buying properties to sustain their business in Hong Kong. There is a demand, a business demand of businesses. I hope I think they should not be asked to pay an an unreasonable uh, duty just because they want to buy properties. I would uh, respond to other members' uh, remarks in due course. Members may now have a joint debate on uh, Mr. Charles Mock's uh, amendment and the relevant uh, amendments in this joint debate. This is the ninth joint debate. Mr. James To. Chairman, during the second reading debate, I uh, spoke at length why Mr. The, the Democratic Party would support uh, this CSA uh, originally to, to be moved by the Mr. Kenny Leung and now by Charles Moore. Let me recap. The Democratic Party is of the view as follows. We need to combat speculative activities. So we have the uh, BSD, the SSD, and the um, double AVD. And um, for the double AVD, um, it increases the cost of those um, of um, those speculators. In fact, BSD and SSD are already um, effective in combating speculative activities. But then the DP can't agree with the administration uh, as to where the line should be drawn. So it seems that the administration is willing to see the market become stagnant. The administration is willing to see companies shelving their expansion plans, and by expansion plans, I uh, am also referring to um, uh, the plans by companies to hire more staff. And um, um, and the um, administration uh, is willing to see charitable organizations shelving their expansion plans. And such expansion plans may also result in the hiring of more social workers, social uh, or, or welfare assistants, and so on and so forth. Uh, 
But of course,、um, for companies, charitable organizations, if you want to expand, no problem. You just pay、um, double ABD. There was an insurance company which wanted to、um, set up、uh, its regional headquarters here. It wanted to purchase a building、uh, in Hong Kong and hire、um, several hundred uh, more um, insurance agents or brokers. But then the company was asked to pay a few percent more, and that amounted to. Billions of dollars. So, if the company、uh, decides to wait and see if the company doesn't want to pay the double AB,、um, ABD, then what what's going to happen? And what if、um, the、uh, companies and the charitable organisations think this way? Oh, the government keeps saying that there are risks in、um, purchasing property, and、uh, there is the double ABD, and so I、uh, we will not purchase、um, new premises. We will not purchase new offices. So the market becomes stagnant. And and then、um, uh, the whole community would、uh, well, the whole community feel that、um, uh, employment is going to shrink and uh, uh, economic activities will stop? No, but then let me say this. Say. Um, for a church, if it used to have two hundred members, and then a decade later it、um, now has about three hundred members, of course that's not good enough. The growth、um, in membership has been、uh, slow. But then, say if、um, the church premises are no longer big enough to accommodate all the members or the followers, then the church, which needs. New premises may decide to follow the FSS advice and not to buy new premises. And as a result, the um, 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 the members may all need to um, um, be seated in、um, uh, uh, in a very crowded manner. And as a result, these followers may feel that、uh, um, that's the message that the government is trying to send to them. And、uh, these followers or church members may even decide to contribute more of their income to the church, so that the church will have more money to pay for the premises and the double ABD. And Mr. Kenny Flang has、um, got this、um, proposal, and he has、um, reduced this、uh, proposal to writing. I think it's.、Uh, Um, a rather good idea, though I am not saying that this、um, proposal is perfect. So, so we're talking about self-use for at least three years, and please do not think this is、um, a bad、uh, proposal. So,、um, uh, self-use only for three years,、um, no rental income because、uh, rental income amounts to、um, economic activities and um, um, investments or even、um, speculation. Speculation may be involved. Say、uh, some people may invest and uh, get uh, rental income, and then when the prices are high, then、uh, the premises may be sold for the profit. Or, oh,、um, If the property uh, market um, uh, um, is not active, then um, the um, premises may、uh, be used only for investment purpose to generate rental income. But then, of course, if during the three period during the three year period, um, uh, one dollar of rental income has been received, then um, um, that would all be eligible for.、Um, This、um, refund, and you may say,、um, yes, the、um, uh, owner may、um, leave the premises vacant for three years and start leasing the premises out、uh, from the fourth year. But do you think this is going to happen?、Um, for fitting three years rental income, 
um, to um, make the administration believe that um, the premises are for self-use only, uh, only to get back um, the uh, extra AVD. And I don't think this is going to happen. This is it's unlikely that this is uh, this will happen. And also, an application has to be made for refund. If one knows very well that the premises have not been um, for self-use, then one will not want to apply. Now, if you lease the premises to others, um, then um, a, a lot of parties will be involved. Uh, a lot of people will know about it. And the the risk. Um, um, it's very high because um, that would mean that the owner is trying to deceive the uh, IRD, and an imprisonment term is highly likely. I don't know whether this amendment uh, will be passed. If this amendment is passed, then the charitable organisations will benefit. And I will be um, moving an amendment later on exemptions for charitable organisations. And in fact, I uh, really hope that charitable organisations can be um, covered by this um, amendment by Mr. Kenneth Lowe. In other words, if you support my amendment in relation to charitable organisations, then you can support this one first. But of course, Mr. Kenneth Leung's amendment doesn't um, cover only charitable organisations. Um, um, Hong Kong incorporated companies are also covered. But I, I want to say the charitable um, organisations will definitely be covered by this amendment by Mr. Leung. The administration is saying that um, although the, um, there may not be any uh, abuse of this uh, mechanism, the wrong message or confusing messages may be sent to the community. Now, um, um, Mr. Kenneth Long's uh, man man has been um, in the limelight, and um, in fact, um, people's attention have been on Mr. Kenneth Long's uh, man man. And uh, many uh, expect this amendment uh, to be passed. But then I want to say that, um, uh, uh, in actual fact, Mr. Wu Chi Wai's amendment has been passed. So I want to say that attention has been focused on this amendment. And so there are bound to be different messages um, sent to the community. Um, Self occupation for three years. Um, it, um, um, if the premises are leased uh, to others, then um, no, um, you no you no longer be eligible. And then self use, okay, but the administration may say if you can exempt these, you can exempt others. Uh, according to the chairman, um, the meeting uh, will um, um, be adjourned only after. Um, this bill has been dealt with, and uh, I, I believe um, um, uh, this um, bill will be passed after third reading. So, in fact, it's um, Lechko uh, which um, supports this amendment. Now, Mr. Wuchi Wai's amendment was passed. The secretary said that he would um, um, insist on his principles. But then, if um, Lechko member supported the amendment, he uh, uh, would understand why Lechko member supported um, the amendment. But I want to say that um, um, even if this amendment is Passed. Um, this uh, council meeting will be adjourned, and there can't be another amendment coming up, providing exemptions for other parties or other organisations. And um, the administration is not going to put forward other proposals. So, what wrong messages or confusing messages um, can be sent to the community? Um, is it that because of our support for this amendment, the administration being respectful of the LegCo will um, put forward more exemptions? 
I really don't understand. Um, so what is meant by wrong messages being sent to the community? Perhaps people may say this, um, the administration may go mad one day and may offer different types of exemptions. So, in fact, I think it's very simple. As Long Hair has pointed out, this is the CY Long mindset. CY Long always has to win. The SAL government always has to win. What the SAL government proposes is always correct. What legal members proposes is always wrong. Mr. Chung Kwok Pan. Yes, thank you. I thank Mr. Charles Smock for moving this amendment. Um, a few months ago, I uh, moved a motion debate on the return of industries to Hong Kong, and the motion was passed with the support of um, members from various political parties. And so, after the motion has been um, passed, I have been um, urging um, industrialists to um, um, come back. To Hong Kong and set up their operations here, and I can tell the secretary that some of them are really um, interested in coming back to Hong Kong to operate. And one industrialist um, is interested in a five thousand square foot um, industrial unit, and the price is about uh, three thousand dollars per square foot. But then, uh, because of the double AVD, has to pay an extra six hundred thousand dollars, and he. Things six hundred thousand dollars should be enough for the renovation works um, of his plant or factory. Now he um, is not a speculator. He wants to um, move his operations back to Hong Kong. He wants to provide jobs for fifty to sixty workers, and he hopes that other industrialists can also follow suit. And as a result, we can reestablish our. Um, uh, industries in Hong Kong, and there will be um, um, diversified industries in Hong Kong. The um, six hundred thousand dollars should be enough uh, to pay for the renovation works, and I think it's important that we try to. Lessen the financial burden of um, industrialists coming back to Hong Kong to operate. Um, Secretary, I hope that you can talk to this industrialist when you have time. Um, the administration keeps saying that it wants to encourage industrialists to come back to Hong Kong to operate, but in fact, the administration is not uh, practicing what it preaches. I'm doing business in Hong Kong. I really use the premises for my own business, but there is no exemption. If the amendment can be passed, then those who really want to come back and operate a factory, who want to buy fa factory premises for production purposes and also to create employment and uh, business gains for Hong Kong, then uh, these should be encouraged to come back. I have another example in Sham Shui Po. As you know, there are many cloth um, businessmen. There was one who said, I have saved up some money in the past few years, but I have been renting my shop space in order to take care of future uh, possible rental surges. surges. Uh, he would like to buy a shop space. now." We are talking about genuine users. Mr. Secretary, please find the time so that I can take you to see these um, businessmen. They are not speculating. They are not even investing in the property market. They actually are trying to buy property for their own business use. Just now, as the two members said, if you use the premises for three years, and I use the premises for my own business. Well, you, you can walk in and see for yourself. You know that these people are not speculating. And this can be proved.
there are these businessmen who are genuine businessmen, and they would hope that three years down the road the double AVD could be returned or refunded to them. The secretary said that this measure is uh, only temporary and will be subject to a review one year later. Now, if this is passed today, then in July next year we can have a review. And there is one more thing: the Fed is uh, tapering, uh, is debt buying, and also there is a chance for the Fed to increase interest next year, and Hong Kong will probably follow suit. And uh, we think that the um, interest increase cycle will just go up instead of down. And Mr. Secretary, you will know better how that will affect property prices. So if we are talking about three years, and uh, you, in fact, are talking about a review one year later, so for genuine users, you should allow them to get the refund three years later. Because indeed, they are not speculating in the property market. Therefore, today, we are going to support Mr. Charles Mock's amendment. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Leung. Chairman, in these two days, you have heard in this debate that this bill has a lot of loopholes in it. The BPA said many times that we support the adoption of measures to prevent speculation. We find these short-term measures acceptable. However, just to stop short-term speculation doesn't mean we want to stop all transactions and normal business operation. Therefore, right from the start, we propose to the administration that we limit this to three years. And if the property has been bought and has been used by the owner for three years, then it must not be speculation. As Mr. James Toe said, if uh, there is a property that is bought for speculation, at least you want to rent it out and I will be able to get about 9% um, return and the 4.25% that I paid to you will be recouped. So um, as other members said, if uh, you want to know whether the property is for self-use or for speculation, it will be too easy indeed. So we hope the administration will consider self-use, economic development, and also that the property holder will have to apply to the IRD for a refund of the ad valorem stamp duty. In Singapore, the seller's stamp duty is also subject to a three-year period. Uh, you have to pay 15% in duty if you sell it within three years. However, it is subject to a progressive reduction. The Secretary will tell me, I'm sure, that the Singapore has a different tax base, and so there should not be a direct comparison. But I can also tell the Secretary that, in fact, we have the same principle, and that is we hope the property market will develop in a healthy and stable manner, and we don't want to see um, excessive speculation so properties will skyrocket. But you should not um, seek to um, dampen normal business operation. So we want you to relax the uh, measure and exempt self-use non-residential property. And we are also telling you that it's easy to execute because if they have paid the double AVD and if it is proved that they use the non-residential property for three years, then they can make an application to the ILD and the ILD can check each case. And if it is found that they comply with the uh, three-year self-use rule, then there could be a refund. If it is checked out that um, they do not comply with the regulation, then uh, no refund will be paid. But then if you tell me that the ILD doesn't have the manpower resources, you should come here to apply for more resources at the council.
And also, taxpayers also fill out um, the tax returns. And if there is any information that the ILD will need further, then uh, the ILD will do so. Now, you say that it's difficult to open a file for each case. But as I said on Mr. Abraham Sheck's amendment, we are asking for exemption because uh, buying and selling non-residential property is a normal business act. Businesses need retail shops, they need factory premises, they need the space in order to be able to engage more people and to benefit Hong Kong's economy and also pay more tax to the Treasury. But the administration is just saying that it is hard to execute. I think it is just because you don't want to do it. You don't want to have more uh, work to do. Are you really saying that all property transaction in Hong Kong should come to a halt so that you can manage demand? The FS wrote in his blog a few days ago saying that conditional exemption for self-use non-residential property will uh, much reduce the effect of the double AVD and that uh, members may be doing uh, bad deeds with a good intention. Now I will tell the FS and other officials that you should not suppress normal business operation. This is not speculation. Your tough measures are distorting the market. You are seriously um, hampering normal business operation. We want to move this amendment so that we can put right or wrong. We want to allow normal business operation to be carried out. The amendment will not encourage speculation. Rather, businesses can expand in the way they um, operate the normal business. Mr. Chow Smock will only include Hong Kong companies formed by Hong Kong PRs. And another proposal will include charitable organizations. This one is different from the amendment by Mr. Abraham Shek, but uh, we think it is acceptable. Non-Hong Kong PRs and foreign companies are already excluded in this amendment. We believe as um, a free pot. Um, this is not good enough, but it is still better than the amendment by the um, administration. So we'll support this amendment by Mr. Mock. Ms. Starry Lee, the DAB will object to Mr. Charles Mock's amendment, Mr. Chairman. The double AVD will be reviewed one year later if the Council will now introduce a major amendment. We are afraid that there will be more speculation. The public's wishes are clear. They don't want to see spiraling of property mar uh, prices. Therefore, they don't want to see a major reduction of the measures. Yesterday, we already pointed out that the non-residential market, in fact, went way beyond the growth of the economy. Small operators had to wind up because of the hefty rentals. And the BSD was implemented, and in fact, it would only apply to the residential market. And when hot money continued to flow into Hong Kong, when Hong Kong still has a low interest, the hot money has flowed into the non-residential market. And in fact, in fact, after the announcement of the double AVD, Figures showed that the non-residential market also became exuberant, and the most obvious um, area is about car parking spaces. Therefore, we support that the double AVD should apply to the non-residential market as well in order to cool the market uh, so that uh, we can prevent a property bubble from forming. Uh, I can understand the justifications advanced by members who support the present amendment. Some members represent the property um, sector and the professional sectors. I can very well understand their views because uh, 
there has been some um, negative reaction from these circles. And in fact, uh, members have been very cooperative. They did not filibuster at the bills committee or here at the council, even if they do not like these measures. I think the DAB and the other members only have different judgment of the uh, situation in the property market. So I respect the views. Coming back to Mr. Charles Smock's amendment, I think it is well intended. But then the definition of self-use is too broad and uh, it can easily be abused. It is said that um, he would like to add 29D1, partial refund of at valorum stamp duty on instruments relating to non-residential property in certain circumstances. One in this section. Business includes every type of businesses and a business carried on by any charitable institution or trust of a public character which is exempt from tax under Section 88 of the Inland Revenue Ordinance but excludes the letting or subletting to any person of any premises or portion thereof and the subletting of any premises or portion of any premises held under a lease or tenancy. So, in simple terms, my interpretation of the amendment is such that the definition of self-use is uh, as long as you don't let it out or sublet it, then it would comply with this definition. As Mr. Charles Mock said, there are other definitions that this person must be a Hong Kong registered company or Hong Kong PR. And secondly, starting from the date of the applicable instrument, the person must be using the um, said property for a continuous three years for business or for professional practice. Now, this is a very broad definition of self-use. In other words, as long as it is not let out, it is for self-use. However, if there are people who have the resources, if they want to make use of the loopholes in order to avoid paying the double AVD, is it that they cannot do so? Is it so difficult? to make use of a property for a continuous three years, Hong Kong people are very flexible. When the bill uh, will allow exemption, there will be people who will be able to make use of these loopholes. And in fact, if you just put a desk, uh, a, a chair there saying that somebody works there, then it will be complying with the um, definition already. In Hong Kong, there are many um, warehouses and there is a big demand for warehouses. So this is also within the definition of self-use. Just now Mr. Mock said that an oath uh, should be administered. Even so, uh, you cannot accuse him of make, taking a false oath. In fact, I asked Mr. Kenneth Leung the question personally. Is it that uh, the definition of self-use is such that as long as there is no letting out or subletting, then uh, that will be the definition? Well, I understand that the bill uh, adopts a broad brush approach and we may victimize the genuine users. However, if the definition is so broad, I would have to ask myself uh, whether there is a big chance for people to make use of the loopholes. How big is a loophole? If there's a duty refund, people will think about how to use it. Some would uh, resort to all means to reduce the tax burden. And these are legitimate uh, moves to reduce tax burdens. You cannot say that this is against the law. It's, the, it's time for professionals to be creative. And if the people are really interested in uh, avoiding this and uh, they want to speculate in properties, and if they want to uh, sell the property within three years, how can they? How can he do do this? Well, he can have a company registered in Hong Kong, and also condition number one is uh, satisfying a Hong Kong registered company. The company buys a, a non-residential property. Someone works there. It's uh, utilized uh, in a in a low manner in a. It's used to some extent, and in other words, and then there's another company, an overseas registered company. The shares can be uh, buy, bought and sold, and uh, the, the, there's no need to register the uh, sell and purchase in our company's registry. We have discussed uh, with uh, the member for a long time, although we regulate a Hong Kong registered company, uh, but there is no uh, 
guarantee that uh, people cannot uh, make use of a loophole in that uh, the shares can be traded, then we will be creating a big loophole for people to avoid paying double AVD. So after a detailed discussion, the DAB has come to the decision that we cannot support Mr. Charles Mock's amendment because self use is uh, defined as uh, not subletting or not letting the premises. This is too loose. We cannot, on the one hand, say we support uh, the adoption of a demand side management uh, strategy for non residential properties, and on the other, we open a big hole and allow people to use that uh, loophole. So, having considered the matter carefully, we cannot, we have come to this, the decision that we cannot support it. And this is uh, subject to uh, the positive vetting process. Well, unlike other measures uh, where there will be prior consultation. And now this is already implemented. The stakeholders in the market already know and uh, have already digested the, the government's measures. And if we are to open this uh, loophole, the message is that uh, the tough measures are less tough now. This is a big exemption. Just by talking about it, just by speculating that it will be passed. This is a report uh, dated the 10th of July. DSD will become toothless. Speculation will come back. That's the title of the press report. You can find similar reports in other newspapers. Uh, a smart investors can tell the difference uh, between what is real and what is not. But uh, ordinary citizens may not follow our debates uh, Followably, they may not be able to tell the difference. If we allow the resourceful people, smart people, to the avoid this, then this is a, to 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 pick a pick a loophole for us to support. All you know, the DAB is of the view that if we open this uh, gate, this uh, door, it would uh, render, if not uh, the entire. Uh, Double AVD effectiveness. It would also take a lot of uh, tooth, a lot of uh, effectiveness from the measures. Mr. James, uh, Mr. Andrew Leung says that no one would just uh, refrain from letting in order to save the uh, double AVD. As I've said in the second uh, reading debate, there was an overseas uh, insurance company. Uh, the difference in duty pay is a. Uh, one oh nine million dollars or one hundred ninety million dollars. The sum is very big. So you cannot say that innocently say that uh, no one would try to avoid this. Well it, this definition is very loose and I I myself can think can think of a number of ways to try to avoid uh, paying that. Mr To said in yesterday's debate in the context of uh, those uh, mentally incapacitated and make the tough measures tougher. He said, uh, we cannot say that this doesn't happen now, it won't happen in the future. If we open this uh, door, uh, people who are resourceful, who, who, who would be able to make use of it to avoid paying double AVD, and they can continue to speculate. In properties, pushing up prices as well as rentals, Mr. Li Chaoyan, Mr. Ch Deputy. Uh, very rarely, the government cares about how the Labour Party votes on this. The concern is that we would refrain from voting because we seldom support the government. And now this time we have to support the government and uh, vote against uh, Mr. Charles Small or Mr. Kenneth Leung's uh, CSA. We want to do something to fight back the property hegemony because uh, they are adversely affecting Hong Kong and our people. If we want our economy and uh, people's livelihood to return to normal, we must suppress property prices, thereby releasing some capital from uh, Paying 
or, or buying properties, renting properties or buying properties. All money goes to properties. And ordinary people would uh, use their lifetime life savings just to purchase some properties. If the property prices and rental can come down, it's good for Hong Kong economy. Uh, we are now talking about I, a new I, ITB to create or to create an environment uh, that would uh, encourage uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. But if the conditions are not there, how can you encourage uh, new new business? Uh, of course, if you are already well established and you have. Uh, Got a good foundation. Uh, that's okay, but many businesses are interested in uh, property speculation instead of uh, their core business. So we have a, a property hegemony in Hong Kong. If we don't do anything about it, this uh, distorted uh, property market will drag Hong Kong down. Given this uh, broad environment, broad picture. We think it's important that we do something to suppress property prices. Uh, Mr. Kenneth Leung talked to me, and Mr. Charles Mock too. Well, they said they would like to help SMEs to enable them to get a refund in uh, double AVD after they have used the premises for or used the properties for three years. Would there be a loophole? Certainly, there would be a loophole. But uh, to the Labour Party, the the problem is: uh, is this going to help the genuine user? Well, if property prices come down, this will be a genuine help to SMEs. How many SMEs can buy properties? Only a limited number can do this. To help SMEs, we have to make sure that property prices and uh, rentals are not excessive. Uh, when the government said uh, the industrial buildings should be revitalized, the first thing happened uh, was the rising rental, not the redevelopment. It's a uh, six times uh, in terms of rental. It's six times that of uh, 1999. So once the news uh, came out, speculation uh, became more rampant. Now. The uh, CSA moved by Mr. Charles Moore will send a message, and that is a tougher measure will be reduced in toughness to a to, a, to some degree. Will the market therefore becomes uh, become uh, exuberant, which is already the case? Are we going to distort the message? Just like what Mrs. Carrie Lam has done that in distorting public opinion. So politically, public opinion has been distorted, and in market, the message can also be distorted to uh, to to facilitate or to fan speculation and to make property prices rising ever ever, ever more. In economics, uh, there's a so-called imbalance of information. Those who have access to information can manipulate the message. And the property market is an easily um, manipulated market of message. The buyer may not get the message or re know the message. The intermediaries, uh, the property agents, uh, have the message. And the seller would uh, push up the prices. The buyer would have no choice but to buy. Or uh, the message can easily be distorted, and people will become uh, sentimental or irrational. And then we have uh, the irrational exuberance. That's what we have seen in the past few years, where they have a bubble in the economy, in the property market, and uh, that you know in the. In a distant past, tulips were uh, the subject matter of a uh, bubble. That was many years ago. But in Hong Kong and uh, property markets around the world, people speculate in uh, real 
estate properties, just like what people did uh, with uh, tulips. So we should send. We should not send any information to the market that the tough measures are, low, are not so tough now. If we really want to help our people, we should try to suppress property prices through the tough measures. But the Labour Party is not asking for a short-term tough measure package, but a long-term policy to suppress prices and rentals. We should have a capital gain tax and other measures so that Hong Kong people and uh, Hong Kong businesses would have access to a more reasonable property market, whether it is for self-use or we want to make sure that uh, properties uh, will be affordable to them. And that's, I believe, uh, what Hong Kong people want. What the government has done is uh, insufficient. Si Wai Leung and uh, Don Lo Zhang before him only cares about uh, making the uh, developers getting uh, fatter. We object to Mr. Charles Mock's CSA. We hope we will do something that will really help SMEs, the genuine users, and to make sure that they can enter the market by and pay lower prices or lower rentals. Uh, we are very happy that uh, we have made history in that uh, Mr. Wu Chi-wai's uh, CSA has been passed. And I'm, uh, I, I, I may be blamed as, uh, as, as the sinner for not making this one pass. But I'm not interested in whether I should be uh, on a particular side in the, for this historic uh, amendment. Mr. Dennis Kuo, well, the Civic Party will support the CSA uh, moved by Kenneth Leung, and now Mr. Charles Mo is doing this on behalf of uh, Mr. Kenneth Leung. Although policy in terms of the tough measures is to dampen the speculation. But the measures can be regarded as excessive in certain aspects. And this CSA moved by Charles Moore or Kenneth Brown can rectify the problems in certain areas. And we will be helping those people who should not have been affected by the tough measures. But there are two big groups of affected parties. We have residential property users and commercial property users. And let's not talk about speculators because we want to dampen speculation. We are talking about genuine users of residential premises and also genuine users of business premises. They are um, affected to uh, varying extents. I think we need to ask this question. And that is, what is the policy objective of the administration in um, proposing this policy? So is it that you want to um, uh, help the genuine users? Um, is it that you want to make um, the premises more affordable to them? This um, bill doesn't um, draw a distinction between residential and non-residential premises. And so the tough measures uh, also apply to um, the uh, um, business premises. Uh, um, but according to the administration, um, this is uh, um, um, uh, this is an intended move. The administration doesn't want um, people. 
people to uh, or speculators to move from the residential sector to the uh, non-residential sector. Um, so, in other words, the administration wants to um, curb all sorts of speculative activities, and I think your measures should target speculators and speculative activities. And um, I understand that you need to uh, manage demand for residential premises and non-residential premises. So it seems that um, uh, you don't want um, 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 to um, 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 let any speculator off lightly. But yes, I understand your intention, but at the same time, you must make sure that um, genuine users of business premises will not be hard hit. Mr. Kenneth Long's amendment uh, represents a good and sound fine tuning, and I think it's wrong if you refuse to accept his amendment. Mr. Kenneth Long's amendment seeks to help the genuine users of business premises. According to Mr. Kenneth Long's amendment, if the premises have been used, um, um, or, or, or um, have been for self-use uh, for three years, then uh, there can be an application for refund. So speculators will be able to benefit from this amendment. Do you think speculators will um, make use of the premises for their own trade, professional business for three years? And the IRD can require uh, the lawyer to um, prove the use in the past three years. So they can, uh, it's, uh, they can um, be different instruments and ways to uh, prove the use of the premises in the past three years. Um, this, this is a special measure. This special measure um, or these special measures are needed for special times, as you've put it. And as a result, you may have to deploy uh, more staff um, in the IRD to um, ascertain the use of the premises in the previous three years. And I think this is um, um, just reasonable since um, um, I believe your measures do not want to, uh, or you, you do not want to, through your measures, hurt the genuine users, especially the SME operators. I understand that um, you do not want to uh, make both demand and supply in the market tight, because if this happens, the genuine users will be harmed. These are genuine users. You can't um, treat them as if they were speculators. I don't see why the administration is unwilling to um, support Mr. Leung's amendment. I think you should be grateful to Mr. Leung for having moved this amendment. And please tell me um, what problems there are with this amendment. Uh, do you think there will be operational problems? And I don't think that um, this amendment will give rise to technical problems that the IRD and solicitors cannot resolve.
and um, uh, is it that you find very serious mistakes or faults with um, the amendment? I think the answer should be no. We did not support the um, exemption proposed by Mr. Abraham Shek, but we do agree with Mr. Abraham Shek that we should not hurt the genuine users of office premises and um, shop spaces and other business premises. And I think Mr. Kenneth Long's amendment represents um, a very good balance. I think um, there is a lot of um, um, thought behind um, this amendment, and I think this amendment doesn't go against the administration's policy intention, and it can take care of the interests of the genuine users. So how come you're not willing to um, accept good advice and good suggestions. Now, uh, concerning the um, six-month period, you said you are willing to um, come round to good advice. So how come in this case you are not willing to accept um, this uh, very sound amendment? So with these remarks, Chairman, I support Mr. Leung's amendment, uh, which is um, moved by Mr. Charles Mock. Um, Mr. Abraham Shek, I want to say that, Chairman, I support this amendment. I um 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 I have been um studying this matter from um. Uh, the point of uh, from from the perspective of the legislative spirit, yes, we want Hong Kong people to be able to buy flats in Hong Kong, but it is never our intention to hinder or obstruct Hong Kong's economic development, and that's why I have um, um, adopted a, a um, macro perspective. I do not want to um, affect Hong Kong's economic development. Um, the opposition camp opposes my proposal. They are of the view that my amendment will only benefit the developers. They um, do not look at the legislative um, intent or spirit. Now, I think what benefits um, the developers will also benefit the economy as a whole. If developers um, um, stop building flats, then um, the 300,000 workers, the 1.5 million people in Hong Kong will be affected. And um, then the middle class and also the SMEs, now they want to purchase their own uh, office or industrial premises because they um, do not want uh, to have to be worried about um, rental increases in the future and also they can uh, mortgage their um, property um, um, to facilitate their cash flow. And uh, I was sad when I heard what Mr. Lee Chuck Yan said. This amendment um, has been proposed by uh, a member from the Democratic camp. Mr. Lee said it was um, said that he was um, he. It was not that he didn't support the amendment, but he didn't want the developers to benefit. I think we should um, just look at the issue. If um, uh, and I, I think we should support what is right, and we should oppose what is wrong. He, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, said that he wanted um, um, property prices to um, um, slump. Now, I want to say that under Article Two of the Basic Law, this is a capitalist um, society. So, um, um. Li Chuck Yan wants to see property prices drop very um, drastically. Remember um, the negative 
equity problem we had after the、um, handover. So does it mean that he wants all 1.5 million、um, owners in Hong Kong to suffer from negative equity? No wonder why the FS is telling Hong Kong、uh, or, or legislators not to do bad things out of good intentions. Chairman, in 2012, I proposed、um, some exemptions for Hong Kong companies, and I said that、um, those、um, companies、um, applying for、um, refund had to、uh, make declarations. And now, Li Chuck Yan,、uh, in fact.、Um, Supports the、uh, return of the BSD to the developers. Um, um, and and、uh, urban renewal. When the developer、uh, was able to get one hundred percent after three years, then、um, uh, a refund could be granted to the developer. What logic is this? I think Mr. Lee Chuan has forgotten what he has done and what he has supported. Mr. Starry Lee said that. She could not support、um, the、um, amendment or the measure because the measure would fuel speculation. How come there is a mechanism to guard against abuse? As Mr. Kenneth Long has pointed out,、um, the premises can't be sold,、um, the premises can't be leased, um, um, not even a portion of it of the premises. It is said that、um, the effects of the、um, measures must not be diminished or watered down. But I want to say that the integrity of the package has already been uh, uh, uh,、um, jeopardized because of the、um, passage of the amendment in relation to、uh, TPS. So please, understand that those who create wealth for society are not robbers or thieves. They are just businessmen. They are also、um, doing、uh, what can benefit Hong Kong. Our SMEs employ over one million people in Hong Kong. SMEs are creating wealth for society. So、uh, why why can't we take care of their interests? Article one hundred eight of the Basic Law says that we should have a simple and low tax regime. And now we have BSD fifteen percent, and then the uh, um, ABD from four point five percent to eight percent. Do we still have a low tax regime? Mr. Lee Chuck Yan said that、um, various types of taxes should be introduced, but、um, does he remember that in fact he、um, did、um, swear allegiance to the Basic Law? I think he has violated Article Two and Article One Hundred Eight. Yeah. Hey. Look closer at the amendment and see who will be affected and whether it will contribute to the overall development. Of the development, I think Mr. Kenneth Leung has done a great job, and in fact, he has embodied the spirit of my amendment in his amendment,、uh, though in a smaller way. I support the amendment, Mr. Charles Mock. Thank you, Mr. Abraham Shag, for what you have said.、Um, apart from Mr. Kenneth Leung, I am also here. With regard to what Mr. Li Chuan said, I think I'd like to respond to him.、Uh, it's a pity that Mr. Li is not here. I hope he can hear me. I know he wants to combat property hegemony. I subscribe to that as well, but I cannot agree to his logic. He may be using a machine gun to shoot at. Property hegemony, but he fails to do so. And in the inter, in the meantime, SMEs 
uh, are killed. Uh, this is what we are talking about here because there are unintended victims. He said, Mr. Lee said, that SMEs and businesses and also innovative industries are not operating well uh, because of property hegemony. I think the logic here is not really um, meaningful and um, maybe yes, uh, maybe it is because of property prices and high rental, but uh, that should not be the only uh, factor to blame. Just now he said that we should not have the Innovation and Technology Bureau uh, because we just have to tackle property hegemony. Now, I think it is not as simple as that. You can object to my amendment, but if you just say you want to combat property hegemony and therefore you want to object to the amendment, I think it is again another case of unintended victims. Well, maybe the greatest evil is property hegemony, but you will not be able to combat it by opposing my amendment. Rather, many SMEs will be victimized. This is not fair. We hope the policy will be fair to everybody, to Hong Kong people, to big and large businesses. He said that the revitalization of industrial buildings has resulted in property prices escalation. But the two things are quite separate. I don't want to spend time on the revitalization of industrial buildings. Well, that has been a bad job done, but it doesn't mean that at the same time you want to oppose to this amendment because the two are separate. Also, Mr. Secretary, many members had hoped that in um, speaking on Mr. Wu Chi-wai's amendment, we thought that you should move it yourself. You said that uh, you had policy considerations. Maybe you're going to do the same for this one. However, we think rather that you have political considerations. Um, whether you have enough votes or whether you don't have enough votes, you are always political in your consideration. And I'd like to now appeal to members who may not uh, want to support this amendment. I'd like to tell them that they have already supported other amendments, including the one moved by Mr. Wu Chi Wai to exempt TPS buyers from paying double AVD. They supported it. What I'd like to say is the principle behind this amendment is the same as Mr. Wu's. If this amendment is not passed, you again will create unintended victims. I hope you will also understand that this will not affect the major principle of the bill, and that is to use demand management measures in order to control property price. Well, to an extent, you may think that the two are different, but let me draw your attention to a matter of principle. If you kill unintended victims, are you doing something fair? Is this fair to the unintended victims who are excluded from the policy? Is it an, a, a proper and reasonable policy for our society? We are talking about non-residential property. Please do not mix up um, residential and non-residential property. In fact, there will be very little, if not uh, none at all, impact on the residential property market. This 8% duty will affect SMEs most. It will affect the business and also the operating environment for these SMEs. Some people may say, I don't know whether it was Mr. Albert Chan who said that three years might be too short a time. But you have to draw a line somewhere. What about five years, seven years? We hope to do this, and I hope you understand that we want to have a balanced policy. Of course, I would respect the Labour Party and People Power and even DAB, um, whatever their final decision will be, because I know that we will lack a lot of votes uh, from the geographical constituencies. But let me say that 
um, Mr. Albert Chen of People Power said this on Saturday, and I think he said it so well. He said that he would have two kinds of concern: one, that the tough measures will hit those people who um, the policy did not intend to hit, and the broad brush approach will just facilitate the government. And yet, local companies, especially SMEs, will be sacrificed. And the second point was how we should do our best to support SMEs that are rooted in Hong Kong. I think he has said it better than I do, and that is why I'm quoting him. I think he has um, looked at this in a very fair manner, and so. Uh, and yet he said he might not be supporting this now. I, I hope he will revisit the principle. I hope you will think about those who will be affected by this policy. Let us be fair to everyone and not be fairer to just some. In fact, many members might mention different ways to make the uh, tough measures less tough. And Mr. Kenneth Leung, if he were here, I think he would agree that we would support fair and reasonable policies for Hong Kong people, for SMEs and for businesses. If it is something about grassroots, uh, we were talking about PRH tenants who buy TPS, we would support it. And later on, Mr. James Toe, if this one is not carried, he will be moving another one about charitable organizations which should be exempted. Mr. James Toe also mentioned transfer amongst closely related persons. Uh, we are talking about unintended victims and all these amendments, and we should support anything that is fair. So for SMEs who make use of non-residential property, we are applying the same principle. I hope you will look at this from this angle and be fair and be impartial. Let us also support SMEs who are set up by Hong Kong PR and who are domiciled in Hong Kong. Now, some members may object to this one, and yet they might support uh, the next one, exempting charitable organizations. I really hope that you will not just select some kinds of targets and, and say, for example, this is uh, about business operation and these are companies, so you don't want to support them. It, in fact, it is for the same reason. If you support this and you say it will help property hegemony, I think it is the same with the other amendments. Why do we want to treat them separately? Just now, uh, what is uh, some members mentioned what the message is. Now, does it mean that this amendment will again uh, heat up the market? I have heard today that after the uh, uncompleted flats have been allowed to be sold over a longer period, um, there was a heating up of the market again. But however, sequential happenings do not necessarily mean there is a causal link between them. Well, this is not uh, what economics tells us, right? This is not a scientific way of putting it. Should we say that this will be the only reason for heating up the market? Uh, as Mr. James Toe was saying, the demand and the purchasing power have been suppressed for very long. If you only seek to impose tough measures and not complement it with land supply, and then eventually the um, there will be an explosion of demand and uh, people will be too aggrieved. So I'm actually proposing some effective ways in order to release some of the pressure. We are moving the amendment so that on the one hand, we are fair, and on the other hand, we don't want to see any explosion because of uh, excessive suppression. I hope you will view these measures from this angle.
I believe this will make the entire policy more reasonable. It will be fair to everybody in Hong Kong, and also fair to entities. And also, even if you seek to manage demand. This will still be reasonable, and in fact, will be useful. We should not just take a um, a piece meal uh, view of it to say that it will send the wrong message to the market. Mr. Lam Tai Fai, you allow the purchase of multiple properties using one instrument. You allow that to be exempted from the double AVD. In fact, the entire tough measure is not credible, is not convincing anymore because that is ridiculous. In other words, there are obviously loopholes in these tough measures. If Hong Kong PRs register Hong Kong companies and they buy a non-residential property, saying a factory building, um, an office space, and if it is for self-use, continuously for three years, and if uh, this is not exempted from double AVD because the administration says. There are loopholes that can be created. That people will take advantage of it. Do you think this is acceptable? I, of course, won't accept it. The standards and yardsticks are not understood by people. You are、uh, distorting the entire argument. I think the tough measure. Represents something that is unreasonable and unfair, and you selectively penalize or punish the SMEs which would like to buy their own property for their self-use. Chairman, the administration said many times that the tough measures are to suppress speculation. Therefore, yesterday I said a few times by, and I was questioning. The administration. What do you mean by speculation? What is the definition of speculation? I asked the administration this question, but it did not respond to me. Now, speculation is not understood by many people in society anymore. Now, let me share with you my views. If the property is bought for self-use, it is called investment. If it is speculation, then、uh, you are trying just to reap a big profit. What is meant by speculation? You would buy the property. And then you like to make quick bucks in the shortest possible time. The only purpose is to make quick money. The property is not bought for self-use or for renting out or for long-term possession or for long-term investment either. What is the behavior like? The property will be bought at a low price and sold at a high price. What would be the property portfolio? It is always subject to change. There would be many transactions. Of these、uh, properties, in order to make a profit,、uh, these properties are not meant for self-use or for possession. Some people don't even have to、uh, take a look; they will just act as conformers and they、um, buy the property today and sell it off tomorrow as a conformer. I call such behavior speculation. Okay, okay. We we should、uh, crack down on、uh, speculation because. Speculation would、uh, make the property prices high, and people cannot afford properties. It would、uh, prevent SMEs from、uh, buying their own、uh, properties. So we have to adopt a targeted approach in、uh, dampening speculation. But you have just in introduced an across-the-board package. To affect both speculators and non-speculators, then、uh, the policy is not well defined, is not well tuned. So, should we plug the loopholes? Even a, a not so smart、uh, person would say that we should plug the loopholes so as not to affect the business environment. So that's why I have been asking the government the definition of、uh, speculation. If it's for self-use. For three years, is the period too short? Three years is a long period. You have to pay more. If you ask an SME to pay the mortgage for three years, it's not easy. The economy is is poor. Doing business is difficult. The profit margin is low, and if you have to pay the mortgage 
for for such a long period is tough. It's difficult. If you do not exam the double AVD, uh, it's going to be even tougher for SMEs. You have to understand that SME purchase properties to increase its uh, assets to fight inflation. To make sure that it doesn't have to pay higher and higher rental demanded by the landlord, this is about maintaining uh, their own competitive edge. But the government is not compassionate towards them. The government doesn't understand that they are in a tough business environment, and and we should support SMEs. SMEs are uh, which purchase properties for their self self use business use. What has the current government done to help SME, Mr. Deputy? Can you think of any example? If you can't think it, think of any off the cuff, then there's none. And if you have to think hard before you come up with some examples, then those are not uh, very good measures. We don't expect the government to really help SMEs. We hope that you would not uh, adversely affect SMEs, which are doing genuine and uh, legitimate business. So please, please uh, uh, give them some leeway. When you allow an instrument to buy many, many properties, the policy is no longer consistent. The credibility has, is gone. You can counter-propose to Mr. Leung that five years is still too short. It, it would uh, pass in a fresh. Of three years is too short. Uh, you can uh, counter propose that it should be five years, and SME can have a discussion. Well, it's for self use. Well, we don't mind waiting for another two years. After five years, we can apply for a refund of the uh, double AVD. Well, we, we should discuss and negotiate, just like the uh, constitutional reform. We should not have things. Dictated to us. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Abraham Shah wants to have an across the board exemption. You said no. And now it's, uh, it's going to be a smaller concession. Although the big one is not uh, uh, given, There's, we are now asking for a smaller concession. So I hope the government will not be so stubborn. It, would, it should listen to public opinion. If uh, SMEs can uh, prove that it's for self-use, you should allow the concession. They can ask them, you can ask the SMEs to take an oath if they pro provide false information. You can uh, pursue them for criminal liability and to ask them to pay two times or three times or four times the original duty. Or you cannot prevent people from uh, making use of the loopholes. And now genuine users, legitimate uh, businesses, have to pay a higher price for properties, a few more percentage points above the normal one. You are adversely affecting them. 98% of our companies are SMEs in Hong Kong. So you are very wrong. Your approach is very wrong. Mr. Deputy, I support this not just bec not because I'm from the industrial sector, or I support SME for whatever causes. I'm pragmatic. If uh, the property is used for three years, there's no speculation, both in terms of intention or behavior. The tough measures to tackle speculation should not apply to such consumption behavior. If we continue like this, uh, things will become very messy. So I support Mr. Kenneth Leung's uh, amendment, and I hope Mr. Albert Chan can think it over. After listening to me, you can rebut me. Three years is speculation. Is self use for three years speculation? You uh, you understand industrialists. You recently visited YK. Uh, the building uh, is to be demolished. Ask your industrialist buddies if uh, someone holds a property for three years. Is it speculation? 
confirm more transactions are speculation. They buy on the low, sell on the high. They will try to ch sell the property on very quickly. You cannot really hold on the commercial properties for three years in, ter in, ter in terms of uh, speculation. Mr. Tony Chair, uh, Mr. Deputy, I have to declare my interest as a property owner and I also own a property consultancy firm uh, dealing with uh, property transactions. Mr. Deputy, Mr. Kenneth Leung's uh, CSA is this. Uh, as long as this is a Hong Kong registered company or Hong Kong permanent residence, when uh, and if we count three years from the time of purchase of uh, non-residential properties, if the properties are for self-use, for the operation of the business or trade or profession in Hong Kong for a continuous period, and then after the expiry of the relevant period, an application can be uh, submitted to the ILD within two years for a duty refund. And the ILD will, in respect of the non-residential property, refund uh, the uh, owner the difference between the new and old uh, stamp duty rates. I said in the resumption of the second reading debate that I agree that uh, for Hong Kong PRs and Hong Kong businesses should be entitled to a duty refund after satisfying certain conditions. But I'm also concerned that uh, such an exemption would uh, fan speculation in uh, non-residential properties. There may be loopholes which will uh, render the government's uh, de demand side management measures less effective. And also, if you want to define the buyer and whether the property is for self-use, well, there are difficulties. Some members have mentioned taking an oath. Um, you must provide some guideline for on how the oath is to be taken. Because if someone takes an oath and the oath is proved to not to be correct, well, they will be... Uh, caught inadvertently by the law. And as three years is not sufficient. I'm of the view that not providing an exemption to these people or uh, our businesses is acceptable. Therefore, I have reservation about the proposed CSA. Mr. Deputy, to decide whether a property purchased by a company is for self-use, uh, we need, first of all, to consider the definition of self-use. It must be clearly defined, and you must be prepared for the many different forms of so-called self-use. There must be clear guidelines and uh, procedures to decide what is self-use. Many Hong Kong companies will purchase properties for self-use, but at the same time, they would try to hold the properties of two other companies. That com other company may not be the uh, entity operating the business. So do you regard uh, this case as a case of self-use? And some companies may, after uh, purchasing a property, use the uh, premises predominantly for its own use, but it will also sublet a part of it, a small part of it. Would you regard that as self-use? If you regard that as a self-use, do you need to define the uh, portion or the value of the part for self-use in order to calculate the amount of the duty refund. These are some of the problems that we need to tackle if we are to do it. I've just mentioned some straightforward examples. I believe in the market there are many, many more, much more complicated cases which are difficult to delineate. We have to consider this point carefully.
if we do not carefully consider these problems and implement the proposed CSA, provide thereby providing a duty refund mechanism for Hong Kong registered businesses, there will be disputes, many many disputes in the future. There may be legal disputes. And uh, Mr. Kenneth Leung's uh, CSA uh, has not uh, said anything about these problems. And many companies are operating on self-owned uh, premises or properties. And uh, the properties may be owned by another entity. When they calculate their business uh, outgoings, they may deduct rental before arriving at the profit and then pay the profits tax. If we uh, pass the CSA of Mr. Leung's, then perhaps uh, we would uh, demand that the same company should uh, own the property and run the business and there should be no deduction of rentals. So is this uh, in the best interest of uh, these companies in terms of uh, tax burden? There are many problems in the CSA. We should uh, take care of the uh, bigger public interest. I'm not going to support the CSA. Mr. Wuchi Wai. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Many members' uh, speeches and the government's response touch on the point that uh, if uh, the uh, CSA moved by Mr. Uh, Kenneth Leung or Charles Moore is passed, there will be profound implications. And what are they? The government has been saying that this would uh, encourage a short-term speculation in residential properties. The top measures would be rendered less effective. A wrong message would be sent to the public. People would doubt the determination of the government in uh, dampening the uh, heater market. Well, these are the arguments, the strongest arguments that the government has been relying on in many, many cases. But we have to look at the policy intent of this Bill, stamp duty amendment bill. This is about stabilization of the property market. The government would do whatever it takes to revive or to make short term speculation even more rampant. If this is the policy intent, this is the biggest policy intent, I think. The SAR government and uh, the directors of bureaus have been uh, trying various means to attract uh, businesses to come to Hong Kong for long-term investment. Hong Kong is an international financial hub. This is the way we, we make a living. That's why Singapore, in dealing with similar cases or similar laws, they draw the line at three years. So, um, refund uh, can be sought um, um, only if the three-year um, criterion can be met. How come the administration keeps telling us that um, the amendment will jeopardize the integrity of the policy or the package of measures and that the amendment will uh, send a wrong message to the community? Now, when this bill was drafted, uh, the administration made no attempt to draw a distinction between speculation and investment. Now, I think uh, if the administration um, had um, tried to um, focus only on speculation and not investment, um, then you would have um, accepted and incorporated many of our members' uh, suggestions. I remember in 2012, um, you um, also 
uh, put forward the same arguments, confusing messages to the um, community, um, um, jeopardizing the integrity of the package of measures, and all members' amendments were rejected by you. Now, I want to discuss the policy itself with you, Secretary. Uh, we don't. Is it that we do not want a piece of legislation to harm the innocent? Am I right? So for Hong Kong permanent residents, um, Hong Kong companies, um, we we in fact want all these. Um, to take root in Hong Kong, we want them to have long-term commitment in Hong Kong through making their investments in Hong Kong. So we we should be providing policy support for um, such long-term commitment, but we are not. We are charging these people double AVD. You may say, uh, as Hong Kong is such an attractive um, place for investment, uh, um, companies will still be incorporated in Hong Kong, foreign investors will still be interested in investing in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is such um, a good place for investment. If that's your philosophy, then how come you are against Increasing the profits tax rate, Secretary. Do you remember that when we um, had a discussion on the um, taxation review, um, you said that uh, any changes to the tax system would affect the government's revenue and uh, would drive foreign investors away. So how come these factors have become? Irrelevant factors in your eyes when we come to the double AVD. The Pan Democrats said in the taxation review that more profitable enterprises should be asked to pay more profits tax. They should be asked to pay higher rates, and you said no. And I know that um, um, after I've said this today, in future you may say, um, "So, Mr. Wu, in fact, you um, should also agree that taxes should not be increased, profits tax should not be increased." But I think we all want Hong Kong's economy to be vibrant. We want enterprises and individuals to make long-term investments in Hong Kong. We want them to um, feel assured. We want them to be able to. Plan for um, their long-term presence and investment in Hong Kong. But Secretary, you are telling us that this amendment, if passed, will give rise to very undesirable consequences. But Secretary, isn't it true that our policy should? Be able to encourage enterprises big and small to make long to have long term commitment in Hong Kong, and then um, Mr. James To has um, proposed an amendment in relation to exemption for charitable organisations, and I think it would be even better if charitable organisations can be covered by this amendment. Uh, I think it's just reasonable for charitable organisations to uh, apply for a refund from um, the government after three years if they really qualify for the exemption. But then again, I'm sure the secretary will say that um, Mr. James Toh's amendment, if passed, will send the wrong message to the community. And then in twenty. Twelve. When um, we discussed the stamp duty bill, we were told that there were over six thousand charitable organisations in Hong Kong, and um, they might make use of the um, legislation to circumvent um, 
um, the payment of the due stamp duty, and then uh, the, 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 um, some even said that charitable organizations might be made use of to um, um, speculate in property. So it's really ridiculous that the administration merely knows how, uh, how to emphasize um, the um, drawback of members' amendments, and that is um, sending a wrong message to the community. So we now know that the, our government doesn't want Hong Kong people and um, overseas investors to uh, make long-term investments in Hong Kong. If even if you are willing to um, make a long-term commitment in Hong Kong, you need to you need to pay double ABD. So, do you think it's good to send this message to the investors? And I think um, you should only um, um, combat. Um, Speculative activities, in other words, buying and selling within a very short period of time. Now, um, I don't think I have seen a cost effectiveness analysis in any of your papers. So you have decided to adopt an across the board approach. Um, you are, you're willing to even harm the innocent parties. Is it really worth the while doing that? The government always says that Hong Kong is an international financial center, and we must do whatever we can to attract investments from outside Hong Kong. We want foreign investors to make long-term investments here. If a company wants to buy uh, an office or, or uh, a property item as a long-term investment, is it that we should um, charge them double ABD? And um, will we, uh, in implementing such a measure, um, suffer losses ultimately? And such losses will have to be borne by all people in Hong Kong. I can remember the government uh, once made a comment on uh, land supply. Um, so you, you are of the view that um, um, in investment and speculation need not be um, differentiated. If we differentiate between the two, then the SMEs, the um, people will try to um, find loopholes and expand. Uh, make use of those loopholes to seek gains. I th think you should um, have a sincere dialogue with electrical members um, to, or you should have um, um, had um, a sincere discussion with electrical members on um, how to plug the loopholes um, in, uh, in the legislation and how to make Hong Kong still an attractive place for foreign investment. But you haven't done that, and as a result, it's already 7.30, and we're still on Mr. Leung's amendment. So, Chairman, we do not want SMEs and foreign enterprises to be deterred from investing in Hong Kong. The government's measures will deter them from making investments in Hong Kong, and as a result, will also suffer losses. And uh, Mr. Leung is proposing that um, the um, companies or the enterprises um, will have to pay up front, and then when they um, are eligible for the refund, they have to make the application. And um, um, an application has to be made, um, and um, a declaration has to be made. And do you think people will 
defraud you in order to get this modestry fund of the AVD. In my view, Mr. Charles Smock's amendment should be supported. So I want to say that I support the amendment and I hope that members uh, will also consider supporting this amendment. And I hope that we will not be sending this very wrong message to um, the community that Hong Kong doesn't welcome um, investments, local and foreign. Uh, Mr. Chen Chi Chin, uh, last night the, uh, we um, convened a press conference. Um, we said that we could not support Mr. Kenneth Leung's amendment. Now, why um, did we have to convene a press conference to make the announcement? And that was because um, I believe our votes were critical and the media and the government were very concerned about um, our voting inclination. I want to say that uh, we have um, considered the matter very carefully, very seriously, and we've come to this decision. Initially, we said that we would not support Mr. Kenny Fleung's amendment. Mr. Kenny Fleung um, uh, still um, tried to uh, lobby us um, um, for support, um, although um, he was in Finland. He um, uh, still um, sent me um, short messages. He still um, wanted me to support his amendment, and he asked me to um, 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 tell him um, my concerns or queries, so that he could try to address my concerns. I understand that Mr. Kenneth Leung has proposed this amendment for the benefit of honest businessmen who want to acquire property in Hong Kong for their business. Uh, in fact, we did try to consider whether we could support the amendment. I want to say that uh, we do have the interest of um, small local enterprises in mind. I know many of these friends, um, they operate SMEs, they want to uh, buy their own shop spaces, um, um, factory premises. I have a friend who is called the um, 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 so, uh, 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 a beauty expert and um, she doesn't uh, want to operate in leased premises. And of course, um, she's now very wealthy because in the past decade or so, um, she, um, um, she um, had a very good business and what was more, she um, uh, could make a lot of profit because um, the um, premises um, became more and more valuable. And I have an uncle who uh, operates um, a factory in the mainland. Um, now he wants to uh, come back to Hong Kong to operate. He wants to buy a small um, flattered factory unit. But then he may not be able to do so because of these um, tough measures. And then I have some friends who are artists. They want to have their own studio, spend rooms. Um, workshops, um, in industrial buildings. They want to buy those premises and they are those who want to um, take root in Hong Kong. They are the small enterprises in Hong Kong. What about this amendment? Apart from helping this group of people, will there be um, counter effects will it be counter effective with regard to residential property the line is drawn by the administration that you should be a Hong Kong PR who does not own any property when it comes to non-residential property however Mr. Kenneth Leung's amendment does mention Hong Kong PR but there is and or all Hong Kong registered companies. When it comes to Hong Kong registered companies, that means 
uh, you don't have to stick to the condition of Hong Kong PR. Does it mean that non-Hong Kong PR, as long as they register companies in Hong Kong or control companies registered in Hong Kong, then they can still enjoy the exemption? If you go in the other direction by tightening up the administration's proposal, then I think there is room for discussion. But here, you are not limiting it to Hong Kong PRs only. Well, I think um, as it is worded, the amendment is too wide. Very often, people hold property in the name of companies. So you are not limiting it just to Hong Kong PRs. You also say you want to help SMEs and micro enterprises. But this is not written into the amendment. You don't mention the SMEs. So large corporations will also stand to gain. If you only want to help SMEs or micro enterprises, you can further narrow down the amendment, talking about the scale of the company and also the price of the non-residential property that can be bought. So if you further narrow it down, then it will be closer to what members are really saying uh, what the amendment should do as to whether it should be three years, five years, seven years. That can be discussed. I heard Mr. James Toe say that insurance companies would like to buy headquarters to expand their business. Now, that is not SME. And churches may like to own their own premises so they can spread the word of God. So if you tell the people in charge of an insurance company or churches and say uh, that the property prices will probably fall by 20 to 30 percent, then even a pastor will tell you, let us rent for the moment. Let us go, not go into the market. So even in extraordinary times, we should not send the wrong message to individuals who would like to start their own business. Let us not put them in a dilemma as to whether to buy property. As I have always said, if you provide first-time home buying loans to young people, you should not provide it when the market is unstable and going up. You would just tempt them into buying property and they will become the first victims in case of a collapse. So the same goes for those who are starting their first business. You say you want to help them, but I won't encourage them to buy property, at least not at this time. It will be so difficult for them anyway to buy property when prices are so high. I don't think they can afford a shop space or a factory unit. I would recommend that you rent for one year or two years. If you trust the administration, these are just extraordinary measures for exceptional times. And then we can have our eyes peeled to see whether the tough measures would be withdrawn uh, one or two years later. And I'm talking about this wrong message because some people may take advantage of the message to speculate on property. And also those who now have second thoughts about uh, opening up uh, their own business, and you also give them the wrong message because in a way you are um, inciting them to buy property. And if my friends ask me, I will say no because the market is really unstable. You cannot predict a major collapse. Some people say Occupy Central will affect Hong Kong's economy, there will be losses caused, etc. So whether it be external or mainland or local or political factors, there are too many uncertainties. Young people who are starting their businesses for the first time should not be enticed by exemptions from government policies and by property. Ms. Starry Lee said very clearly that owning non-residential property by companies would mean that um, 
stocks of a company can be transferred. Now you know this much better than I do.、Um, that is actually within the law, and and it is quite okay for people to do it. But with this amendment, there will be an exemption for the、uh, so-called SMEs or micro enterprises. You referred to making. It possible also for large corporations and even multinationals to benefit. So I think the amendment is too broadly cast. Now, talking about what message will be sent to the market, will it be the wrong message? Well, I dare not say. I cited my doubts. Now I don't know whether the market will shoot up once it is carried.、Um, maybe not, but. Looking at the、um, policy intent and the objective of the bill, that is to help Hong Kong people who do not own property to buy property, and also、uh, talking about your good intention of helping、uh, individual business operators or SMEs who would like to take root in Hong in Hong Kong, and also help them start their business. Well, I think this amendment doesn't seem to be able to achieve that objective. That. That's why at the press conference yesterday we made some proposals, and hopefully there could be other policy or taxation measures from the administration, so SMEs and micro enterprises and individual operators can be helped. I hope、um, something will be included in future PAs or budgets, and the people power will be giving our proposals to the administration. At the time of PA and budget, therefore we cannot support this amendment moved by Mr. Charles Mok on behalf of Kenneth Leung. We are doing it only after very detailed thinking. Mr. Chen Kin Po, thank you, Chairman. Many members talked about an insurance company which bought a whole block,、um, uh, which is a commercial building, and had to pay hundreds of millions in stamp duty. Mr. Kenneth Leung's、um, amendment moved by Mr. Charles Mok may help a refund for this、uh, insurance company. So I'm also under pressure, but I will have to give this very serious thought before I do so.、Uh, what is unfortunate is that this amendment is quite broad. The self-use period is too short. There are too many loopholes, and it is open to a lot of abuse. If Mr. Kenneth Lam will perfect his amendment,、uh, say if he will ask Mr. Lam Tai Fai to see how loopholes can be plucked, as Mr. Lam Tai Fai has said, or if he is willing and and be humble and talk to Mr. Tony Che, who understands the property market so well, so that technical details can be threshed out better, so that the amendment can really target SMEs without. Damaging the original intent of the bill. In other words, if it can be tightened up at various places, I'm sure he can even convince the GC members、um, to convince him. But now, as it is worded, the amendment is not、um, detailed enough. It is、um, open to abuse, and、uh, therefore, if I should support such a, a broadly cast. Amendment. I don't think I、uh, can do it. And also, I have another worry that the amendment will send a, a very wrong message to the market. As you know,、uh, there was a small change to the stamp duty for residential properties, and people interpreted it immediately as、uh, a relaxation of the tough measures. And again, there was some speculation in the market. In Hong Kong, there is this weird situation. It doesn't matter what you really do. What is important is how people see it. In other words,、um, it is not something you do, but how people interpret it.、Uh, some people may be reading some newspapers and are brainwashed, and they、uh, have only received messages from one source and not other sources. And if suddenly you relax the measure like that, I'm sure. Within a few days, there will be a surge in the market by a few percentage points. So this is a good deed that will be done with bad intentions. I'm sure the prices will go up by a much wider margin.
much bigger than the uh, percentage of AVD that can be exempted. So it is very clearly that this is a wrong way to do it. Therefore, basing on the reasons I talked about, I cannot support such a broadly cast amendment. Mr. Tommy Jung. Thank you, Chairman.